This is Valley News Live at 5. We begin with breaking news. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. I'm Nashe Taylor. We're now learning what caused the deaths of seven people in Moorhead over the weekend. The um, it is a uh, result found a lethal level of carbon monoxide in the victims. They were found on Saturday at a home on 13th Street South. Investigators found two things that produce carbon monoxide. The first is a furnace that was in a separate room in the garage area, and another was a van that was also in the garage that had some mechanical issues. The press conference is still going on. Let's listen in. That helps to answer that previous question where I said no, it's because I just didn't have that piece of information right at the time. Did, did they appear if maybe they were trying to call for help or anything like that? I really mm -hmm. No. As far as how the parents were found, were they found on the floor or on the beds or could you describe? They're on the floor, that's the best I can tell you. So now I'm assuming based on the timeline you're working on, that would be safe to assume then that obviously the kids were not at school on Friday, which is helping you kind of build the timeline here. That's correct. Yes, they were not at school on Friday. Okay, um, I'm just going to close out here too just by um, stating um, kind of similar to what the mayor has already stated, um, just about the condolences for the family. Um, in, in our meeting that we had with uh, family members, uh, this is an extremely nice group of people. Um, they're very happy to be here. They, they love this community. They um, were really pleased with you know the outpouring of support that they've seen so far. Um, they've got their own clergy that they're working with and uh, you know if they want details on the funeral to be out I'm sure that will come out at a later time so you know please please offer them their their privacy to grieve um, but just know that these are terrific members of our community and this was a, a huge and tragic loss at, at a holiday season so um, and we'll keep watching out for our staff so thank you guys very much for coming in today and, and have a good day thank you thank you all right, that press conference just wrapped up. Now, meanwhile, the investigation is still active. We'll post any updates we get on this story onto our website at valleynewslive.com. High levels of carbon monoxide in a South Fargo apartment complex had first responders rushing two people to the hospital this morning. It happened just after 11 in the 4700 block of 46th Street South, where officials say the building's boiler room was to blame. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley was the first on the scene this morning and spoke to fire crews today on keeping you and your family safe from the silent killer this winter. It was a rare sight for December as windows and deck doors were open this afternoon in frigid temps as tenants aired out their units after deadly amounts of carbon monoxide was found inside their apartment complex. We opened their mechanical room and we were getting readings over 1600 parts per million, which is almost very bad. Fatal. Crews say they were initially dispatched here for a medical call, but as first responders walked into the building, carbon monoxide readers on their medical bags started alerting to dangerous levels of the odorless and tasteless gas. All CO can be deadly. So it says both tenants who were taken to the hospital live directly above the boiler room, one on the second floor, the other on the third. He says both victims had clear signs of carbon monoxide poisoning, which can look like flushed skin, nausea, and extreme tiredness. One of those problems that comes on very slowly, and all of a sudden you usually end up, you find people that just go to sleep and don't wake up. At this point, it's still unclear if either of the units have their own carbon monoxide detectors. Something so it emphasizes, if you don't have one or your batteries are out in the ones you have, now is the time to change that before it's too late. In South Fargo, Baby Hurley, Bad News Live. Both of victims' conditions are still unknown at this time. It may have been a sunny day, but it was still pretty brisk outside. In fact, some areas may be expecting some snow tonight. Let's go to Hutch Johnson for a first look at your weather. Hutch?
Thank you, Deshea, and good evening, everyone. As we glide through our midweek day, we do have clouds making their way in from the west as we look in on our home of economy view in Grand Forks, North Dakota. And today was fairly quiet, and that sunshine sure felt nice, but we do see the clouds moving into the eastern third of North Dakota. Now, the blue that you see on the screen there, that is some snow shower activity on the radar. Some of it moving into central parts of North Dakota, north of Bismarck, but the majority of it staying out near the oil patch and up into uh, Saskatchewan. As we take a look at the snowfall potential with this system, it's going to skirt our northern counties. We'll have a trace of snow, say along that Highway 2 corridor, and then as we go north toward the international border, would, be, would not be surprised to see some one to three inch reports there. And that's by the morning hours tomorrow into northern Minnesota. Here in Fargo, I don't expect much in the way of snow. We could see a flurry. Look at temperatures steady to slowly rising, kind of hovering right around that 20 degree mark with east winds. And we have a couple of rounds of wintry weather for the holiday weekend. Christmas Day or Saturday has been uh, determined to be a first alert weather day now and a second system on the weekend strikes Sunday late and into Monday morning. That will also bring some impacts. Not all of us will be impacted, but I'll show you the latest and the timing and track of this. And we have yet another first alert weather day we've issued for next week. We'll tell you why here in just a moment. OK, thank you so much, Hutch. You bet. The House Oversight Committee will launch an investigation into a crowd surge at Travis Scott's Astro World Music Festival in November that left 10 people dead and dozens injured. The hearing will focus on a live nation's role in the planning and safety of the event. The committee is requesting information from them er by early January with a briefing to follow. What happened at the festival follows a long line of other tragic events involving Astro World. The entertainment company has faced lawsuits over safety issues in the past. Incredible body cam video from the aftermath of a tornado outbreak in Kentucky earlier this month. Two babies found wrapped in a blanket inside of a bathtub. The deputies can be seen looking through the rubble in Dawson Springs. They eventually heard crying in the distance and then came across the 15 month old and a three month old who were still in the tub along with a blanket, pillow and a Bible. Both children survived. One was taken to the hospital for treatment of a head injury. Boeing 777s can now head back to the skies. The Federal Aviation Administration recommended they resume flights as long as new inspections and modifications happen. These jets are equipped with the same type of engine that exploded on a United Airlines flight earlier in 2021. In February, investigators say the failure of the fan blades in the right engine caused it to rain debris on neighbors as it returned to the airport. The FAA says this impacts 128 Boeing 77s worldwide and 54 are here in the U.S. United Airlines is the only U.S. operator affected. The Omicron variant has been detected in all 50 states and Washington, D.C. It took just 21 days to spread from coast to coast, but there will soon be a new tool to help fight the virus. Chris Pallone reports from Washington. The medication is called Paxlovid, 30 pills taken over five days by people in the early stages of a COVID infection who are at risk of developing severe disease. In the early clinical trial data is that it's 90% effective at preventing hospitalization and death in unvaccinated populations. So this is something that could be game changing. Game changing because it could lessen the number of COVID patients flooding the nation's hospitals. It should be available in days, but supplies will be extremely limited early on. And doctors stress it's not a substitute for getting immunized. We still need to protect ourselves, and that means getting vaccinated, getting the booster, wearing masks, social distancing, those things we know work. Getting tested as soon as symptoms hit will be key, a tough prospect in some parts of the country where tests are increasingly hard to come by. The White House hoping to ease the crunch, making half a billion rapid tests available by mail next month, perhaps too late in areas where the Omicron surge has already arrived. This should already be anticipated. I mean, if I can expect it, I'm sure they can anticipate the quantities needed. The NHL says its players will not take part in February's Olympic Games because COVID cancellations have already disrupted its schedule too much. But New York City says New Year's Eve festivities in Times Square are still on for now.
And we'd like that event to move forward so long as we can do it safely. And while health officials see some encouraging trends emerging from South Africa and Europe, they emphasize we already have the tools to fight COVID. This is a different Christmas. It's not December 2020. It's more hopeful. But what we do in the next several days will dictate what January looks like. A pivotal time in the pandemic. The White House says President Biden tested negative for COVID again today, five days after being in close contact to an aide who later tested positive. Meanwhile, Oxford University and AstraZeneca are taking preliminary steps to produce an Omicron variant vaccine in case it is required for the next phase of the pandemic. Preliminary data has shown Omicron is more effective than previous variants at evading neutralizing antibodies offered by COVID-19 vaccines. We have a breaking news update. Moorhead police just wrapped up its press conference. They released more information about seven people who died in a Moorhead home on Saturday. Valley News team's JC Dodd was at that press conference held by police that took place just a moment ago. JC, what do you know so far? Nishay, just moments ago, the police chief confirmed with the community answering what people have been wanting to know. It was carbon dioxide carbon monoxide poisoning that killed that family of seven last weekend in Moorhead. Now he gave us a timeline. He said the family was last heard from last Thursday. The kids were not in school that Friday and by Saturday night at 750 PM is when police found them. He says all of the family members were laying in bed, appearing to be like they were going to sleep in light clothing, except for the parents who were found on the floor in their bedroom. Now we're going to continue following the story and bring you the latest from that press conference for now live in Moorhead, JC Dodd, Valley News Live. All right, coming up next on Valley News Live at five, we'll show you the most precious gifts stuffed in these Christmas stockings. And we're watching for some snow looking off to the west from our Devil's Lake location. Clouds are increasing in our western counties as we go through and snow starting to develop out to the west. We'll tell you where this is going, but more importantly, we have first alert weather days for the holiday weekend, including Christmas Day, then another system Sunday into Monday. After that, Arctic cold, oh no. Details right after this.